Okay, so one of the questions that I often get is how can I clone my, you know, apartment fob or gym card or whatever to an implant? And I have different videos that kind of explain different aspects of it, but the biggest hurdle is to figure out what kind of chip you have in your card or key fob and then how or if it's even possible to clone it to the chip. So this video is going to cover how to figure out what it is that you have. And so there's a couple different tools we can use to do that. Primarily a smartphone with an app called Tag Info. Uh, it's just a, an you know, app from NXP. They make a lot of different chips and it can do a pretty good job of identifying different chip types and cards and fobs. And the other tool is the Proxmark 3 with the client software. So the first thing you want to do is grab Tag Info on a smartphone and just tap the uh, suspected or, you know, the, the suspect, no, uh, tap the, the card that you want to be able to tell or, you know, fob if you want to see, okay, can I clone it? So let's just do this one. So this is a pass that I got at Disney World. And you know, if I tap it, so the first thing we're checking here is, is it NFC? Is it 13.56 megahertz? And if so, what kind of chip is it? Can we detect it with the phone? Uh, so we did that, we read it. We can see it's an ultralight. So NXP Semiconductors, ultralight C, and we can go to full scan. And the important thing here is, even if we can't tell what the actual chip type is, uh, the important thing is to look at the number of hexadecimal bytes in the ID section. So each two digits here represents a hexadecimal value for a single byte between zero and 255. So uh, we can see this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bytes, which is typical of an ISO 1443A uh, type tag. And so unfortunately, there are no implants technically that can uh, clone, you can clone this ID too. We do have a magic NTAG chip and a flex MN form factor, but it is quite large. It's a big circle and it's a little finicky as a chip. So I'm kind of hesitant to recommend it, but if you absolutely want to, we do have that option. So you can get the Flex MN and uh, be able to clone this ID into the Flex MN Magic N tag and actually set it to emulate an ultralight type of tag. But there's a little bit more going on here with the uh, Disney World Pass. If we go down on the memory, we see some memory contents here. That's not a big deal. But if we go to even, down even further, we can see as part of the ultralight C, the C is like next generation ultralight, it has some memory locked features here and also has some authentication functions. So this is the ultralight um, you know, chip type that was released before the NTAG type. And so it has these administrative functions down here and they're using that to secure the, the, the chip. So at the at this point, I don't believe there are any kind of hacks or cracks or anything where you can get at this information. And I don't think the Magic NTAG chip even supports this type of functionality. It just supports the memory configuration and ID. So in this case, I would say, even though we do have the Flex MN available with the Magic NTAG chip, you probably couldn't clone this ID and get away with it. it you would need some additional features for the day pass. Um, so that's, that's that uh, particular card. Now let's try uh, this card. So if we hold it back to the phone, we don't get we don't get anything. Uh, nothing changes. We can clear the report and try. So this uh, I can tell just by the numbers here that this is a low frequency card. This uh, is 125 kilohertz, and uh, we're going to set this aside so we can check it with the Proxmark to see what we can do with it. So let's check out uh, this one. Well, let's check out the fob. So the fob also no reaction also 125 kilohertz most likely. So we'll just set that aside for later. We'll check this thing out because I think this is interesting. So this is a Topaz um, type of chip and we can scan it and we see it comes from Broadcom, Topaz. We hit the full scan and I, I find it very interesting because it has four bytes as the ID, which is typical of a more, um, you know, what's called the MyFair Classic 1K. Uh, or 4K, it's just the MyFair Classic chip type with a non-unique ID. It's non-unique because it's been used so many times, the chip's been produced so many times that they've rolled over on the ID numbers because there's only four bytes. So, uh, but there's only four bytes here. It has an A to AQ of 000C, which is kind of strange, and um, header ROM bytes. But you can see the memory structure is also kind of strangely uh, aligned or, or um, you know, segmented into these blocks. So it's it's an unusual tag type. You probably won't run across it very often, but it is interesting because it has four byte, four byte UID, which is 
usually associated with the MyFair um, classic chip type. So let's actually address that. So we're going to go back to the old play paths. If you've seen other videos, uh, I use this quite a bit, the Chuck E. Cheese play pass. We're going to go ahead and scan it. And we can see unknown manufacturer, uh, possibly cloned. So it's possible they're actually using some sort of rewritable chip in the play pass. It might be cheaper, I don't know. But we can take a look at it and we see it's ISO 1443A. It's four bytes ID and it has the classic MyFair memory structure. So uh, this is a chip that you can clone to our XM1 or a Flex M1 or any of our magic uh, devices, including our magic ring. So this, um, there's a video about how to actually do that. <laughs> you know, I can put that in the link, the link to that video in the description below. But the important thing to know is that it is actually four bytes. It has this type of sector uh, memory arrangement where you have blocks and sectors. That's, that's important. So we can clone this to uh, some of our implant products. But uh, let's take a look now at these uh, devices, this card and FOB, because they, they didn't react to the phone. So uh, in that case, you're going to need something like the Proxmark. The Proxmark is a much more advanced kind of tool. Uh, I really like it because of the feature set that the Iceman firmware branch brings to it. And it's it's quite interesting. So we already know, we suspect that this is a 125 kilohertz chip. So I'm going to put it on the low frequency antenna here. And the pretty awesome thing is um, I can just type auto, um, although I won't bother. Auto will check both low frequency and high frequency, but we already suspect it is low frequency. So LF search, that's the command. It's going to take a look and we can see, aha, it's set up as an EM410X. It has an ID there. It spits out all the different ID numbers based on different uh, configurations of the uh, byte display when it comes to binary data. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. I'm also curious. We're just going to take a look and see if this is the T5577 chip masquerading as an EM chip. It's going to do some detection stuff. Nope, it didn't find it. It doesn't mean it's not, but it's not uh, easily detectable. So that's that's interesting. I always take a look because sometimes I'm surprised you'll have these fobs come out uh, that say they're EM and they're actually a T5577 and you can actually reprogram them sometimes by accident. Some people do. <laughs> so, uh, so we'll go ahead and put the card on and we'll do another LF search. And so we see, ah, okay, this is interesting. It's an HID prox. So this is a different kind of uh, card. It's, um, it's a HID device. And actually let's take a look again, just for fun. Do a T55 detect, oops, type it correctly. You might notice I'm not typing out the full T55 because it, it does some command checking to say, oh, if there's no other commands that start with T5, we'll just assume. So kind of a shortcut there. And it is actually a T5577. So this, this card could actually be reprogrammed to be many different things, in fact. Um, and there's videos on how to actually do that, program the T5577 uh, further down below. But uh, I'll put the link down below. But anyway, so this is an interesting card type. It's set up, again, as an HID prox. And yes, you can obviously clone this type of card to a, a device that has the T5577 chip in it, like the XEM or the Next or the FlexEM, if you want to get crazy. It's kind of a larger <laughs> disc-shaped uh, device that has really good performance and range. Uh, but but essentially, you know, and again, the Magic Ring, which is another uh, recent product that we released, has a T5577 side to it. So you can clone this card to that too. But the important part is, you know, when it comes to detecting the types of cards and chips and things that you're dealing with, uh, the first order business is just grab a, a tag info app. It works on Android and iPhone. Although iPhone may have a problem actually with detecting the MyFair Classic chips because MyFair Classic is not an NFC standard chip type. It doesn't comply with any of the NFC standards. So um, I don't believe it will do a good job of detecting this chip type, if, if at all. Um, I'd have to get myself an iPhone and check it out, and I, I might do that <laughs> at a later time. But, um, but for sure, Android with Tag Info can tell you pretty much everything about all these kinds of chips. Not, well, sorry, not this one, not the low frequency, but just the high frequency stuff. So if it doesn't read on the phone, the next order of business is getting a Proxmark tool, and then you can uh, go ahead and do uh, LF search. Uh, you can even do HF search. I'll show you how that works. So if you're unsure, you put the card on. It finds it finds that. Uh, anyway, that's how you would do detection on uh, tags, fobs, things like that. And I'll put a little more description uh, down below about what that means. So what kind of 
you know, devices you can detect and what kind of chips you can clone that to and, and put them in your body. So thanks again. And uh, yeah, looking forward to recording the next video.